the Fallschirmjäger or the German paratroopers were considered one of the elite German fighting units of the Second World War. They were known as the Green Devils due to their incredible fighting spirit as seen during countless episodes such as their assault upon the fortress in Belgium, Crete, raiding behind American lines in the Ardennes and holding the monastery at Monte Cassino for months in the face of overwhelming odds. As for the equipment, the Fallschirmjäger divisions enjoyed the very best that Germany had to offer. A perfect example was the recoilless gun. Development of recoilless weapons by Rheinmetall began in 1937 in an effort to provide the airborne troops with heavy support weapons that could be dropped by parachute. Initially produced under the designation of LG-1, LG stood for Light Geschütz or Light Gun. But this was soon changed to LG-40 to match the current year of origin naming system. The gun fired existing 7.5 cm ammunition originally manufactured for other field guns, thus preventing logistic issues associated with the introduction of a new gun. However, this decision meant that the benefits typically associated with recoilless guns could not be fully realized. During the Second World War, the German army had a whole range of guns, rockets and mortars with which to provide close support for the infantry. Artillery is basically restricted by basic physics. The bigger the shell and the greater the range, the more propellant needed. The more propellant, the stronger the breech needs to be. The stronger the breech, the heavier the gun. Similarly, the lighter the gun, the more violent is the recoil. Hence, artillery designers constantly needed to maintain a balancing act between weight and ballistics. The 7.5 cm LG-40 recoilless gun was an attempt to create a lightweight gun with a longer range than the standard issue infantry gun. This type of gun dealt with the inevitable recoil through a completely different principle. Instead of absorbing the recoil within the gun by means of recoil cylinders, weight and movement of the gun itself, the recoilless gun overcame recoil by venting waste gases through nozzles on the breech, which in theory made it potentially an ideal weapon to replace the infantry gun for the uh, Fallschirmjäger and perhaps also the mountain gun issued to mountain divisions, except for two small problems. The first is the vented gas. Hot, moving at speed, it made the gun impossible to stand behind while firing and stirred up a considerable cloud of dust which rather spoiled the effect of camouflage. The second problem was that these guns used more propellant than conventional artillery about five times as much. Therefore, the recoilless gun was confined to take a back seat, useful only by airborne troops who needed something light for transportation purposes, but too expensive for use by anyone else. The LG-40 first saw use during the Battle of Crete, where it apparently equipped the second battery Fallschirmjäger Artillery Abteilung, or the second battery of the Parachute Artillery Battalion. It saw widespread use by German parachute units, both Luftwaffe and Waffen-SS, 
for the rest of the war. The 500 SS-5 Schoenjäger Battalion used the gun during its airdrop on Tito's headquarters at Dwar. It is important to note that the German Gebirgsjäger or the mounted infantry also appreciated its light weight and used them during the battles in the Caucasus Mountains in the later half of 1942. Approximately 450 of them were built until 1944. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.